Part 10 of my Azelia video series is designed to assist players to construct a micro armor force mix for the French in 1939 or 1940 using either squad, platoon or company scale rules. This video is designed to offer a force mix for any rules. However, different rules will require some minor adjustment to any force mix. For example, Panzer Corps allows you to deploy platoon size supporting elements, even though it's a company scale set of rules. I'll attempt to cover the most common differences, but players will need to take these, this in note themselves. It should be noted that this guide is really not suitable for Flames of Wars, as these rules have a reduced focus on historical accuracy and more on playability. Regardless, those rules have excellent guides which players can use instead of this video. For the squad scale, I will be using Microsquad, the game World War II, as my primary guide. However, rules such as Battalion Commander, Blitzkrieg Commander, 2nd Edition, Main Panzer, and Battle Group by Ian S. Clark should all be easily be able to be used to use the force mixes provided. For the platoon scale, my primary guide will be Spearhead, but other rules such as Regiment Commander, Combat HQ, Kampfgruppen Commander, and Combined Arms should all be able to use the force mix guides. Rules such as FFT3 use special combat team elements, which need to be accounted for, but as long as you understand this, those rules can be used as well. At company scale, my main guide is LWRS, or the reformatted version Bivagunskrieg, but Panzerkorps and Divisions Commandeur can easily use the suggested force mixes provided in this video, although note the platoon size elements used in Panzerkorps. When creating force mixes, we need to start with the parent formation, which in the case of the French would be their Division Le Guerre de Mercure, specifically the 1st Division Le Guerre de Mercure, or Mechanized Division. Excuse my extremely poor French. Most players would gravitate to the Division Courassier de Reserve, as they could field Char B tanks, but I find the DLM, or the Mechanized Division, a more well-rounded formation with what I consider is a better all-round tank, the S-35 medium tank. Players can, of course, choose the DCR instead and field Char Bs if they wish. The defensive forces uh, would come from the infantry division. In this case, I'm using a A-series infantry division. Players may choose a B-series, which allows them more elements of a low quality or morale rating, but I find the A-series has more anti-tank and anti-aircraft weapons. Fielding a defensive force depends on what kind of scenarios you wish to play. Meeting engagements between equal forces provide a less than satisfactory game, so, but do not require a defensive force. However, a better scenario has unequal forces meeting, meeting each other, which means you need a defensive force. While you could use your attacking force mix in defense, in practice this is not wise and may leave you at a severe disadvantage, as this would not be optimized for defense. The other issue is the best scenario has a counterattack occurring in the second half of the game, so you would still need your attacking force mix. In this case, I'm deploying a French Infantry Division A series as my defence force parent formation. Using squad scale set of rules, a player will need to deploy a battalion, both a defensive infantry battalion and an offensive mechanised battalion. In all cases, a player will need a battalion headquarters and from two to three company headquarters for both the defensive and offensive force mixes. I like to make these elements interesting by including staff cars, trucks, horses, etc. or other transport figures on it, with two figures on the company headquarters element and three in the battalion. H&R sells six command figures for 60p with three packs meeting all your requirements. Squad scale sets of rules do not normally cover air-to-air -air combat, thus there may be no need to purchase any fighters, but as these may be used in platoon and company scale rules, I would consider it. You can also consider an observation aircraft, as some rules do deal with observation. Heroic and Ross offers aircraft from £1.25 to £1.50p each. There is a wide range of French aircraft available, which with the MB-210 being a good option as a ground support aircraft. The Breguet 19 from Heroic and Ross is a suitable observation aircraft. GHQ offers aircraft in pack of two for $11.95 US. Only the MS-406 is available, but this is a very suitable fighter aircraft. The French fielded, in most part, a 75mm gun. In addition, the division possessed 105mm howitzers or guns, and 155 howitzers and guns. 
At this scale, it would be rare for the 155mm howitzers or guns to be fielded. GHQ offers the 75mm and 105mm howitzer for $11.95 US for a pack of two with mounds, which may be all you require at this scale. Heroic and Ross offers all these weapons except for the 155mm howitzer for 65p each. They also offer tractors for 65p each and you would also have to purchase packs of crew to make the whole thing look very nice. The French possess two types of 25mm anti-tank guns and the older 47mm anti-tank gun. Two of each is all a player would need. The French fielded a 25 and 37mm anti-aircraft gun, although these were not very common. The bulk of French anti-aircraft capacity was machine gun based. GHQ offers the 25mm and 47mm anti-tank guns in packs of two, including a tractor, for $11.95 US each. This is probably all you need. Unfortunately, I was unable to locate any French anti-aircraft weapons, so players would need to find something as close as possible. They were rare, so players may not need to deploy any, but I would probably consider at least having one anti-aircraft gun uh, in your force mix, because you may need it. GHQ being of high quality but costly, and Heroic and Ross being much cheaper, cheaper but lower quality. I tend to use Heroic and Ross for towed guns, adding tractors and cruisers as required. I tend to make my off-playing area artillery as attractive as possible, often including tractors and crew on the same base. As they are deployed off the playing area, the base depth is not a major issue, so you can go a bit crazy if you so desire. It makes it look, it makes a, a very nice figure off the playing area in the corner for other players to look at and be fearful of. Engineers are optional and I've not had any reason to field them at squad level. They would be infantry elements with figures doing engineering activities. There are no French engineers from Heroic and Ross, so you may need to source figures from the British or even Germans conducting a mine clearing, a flame flame throwing, infantry with such or charges, pole charges, SS pioneers and infantry with anti-tank mines. Engineers would normally be transported in larger trucks, so I would tend to give them a miss, but players may wish to become a bit creative and make some interesting engineer diorama. The French have a reasonable range of tanks to choose from, but all you need are S35s. Players could also purchase H35s or H39s, as well as a low number of AMR ZTs or Panhard 178s, but these would be optional and I will not include them in this list. GHQ offers five of these tanks each for $11.95 US. Heroic and Ross offers these tanks for 50p each. I tend to go with HQ, GHQ here as you don't get many tanks and getting the best quality ones is really what I prefer to aim for. The French would field about 16 motorised infantry elements, two 81mm mortar elements and four MMG elements. Each infantry element would consist typically of four figures, so this represents 72 infantry figures. Players need to determine how they wish to mount their own infantry, but this is a good guide. The big question is the trucks. Many players do not bother to purchase any trucks at this scale, as the troops are commonly dismounted when they enter the playing area. For heavy weapons, I mount the weapons and three or four figures around it. If the weapon is obvious, three figures is all you need. If not, then I would mount four, which allows you to quickly identify a heavy weapons element. Heroic and Ross sells 50 infantry figures for £4 and 50 heavy weapons figures for £4. Heroic and Ross also sells trucks for 65p per vehicle. The French would field two infantry companies, each of which would consist of 14 infantry elements and a 60mm mortar element. The battalion would field four MMG elements, one 60mm mortar and two 81mm mortar elements. At this point, you should have a force mix which would allow you to play as an attacker or defender in a game which you would expect to complete within a day. If you select all the tank options and transports, you'll end up with a force mix consisting of about 160 elements. If you only select one tank option and purchase almost none of the transports, this will drop to about 80 elements. Using a platoon scale set of rules, a player will need to deploy a brigade or regiment, although rarely a full strength brigade or regiment. A player will need a defensive infantry regiment and an offensive tank or mechanised brigade, in most cases, or regiment. In all cases, a player will need a brigade or regimental headquarters and from two to three battalion headquarters. You can use the same headquarter elements you had selected for the squad scale set rules, except it's rare to have a third battalion. At platoon scale, it's possible rules will cover anti-air combat, which would require you to purchase fighters. 
If you are playing an attack and counter-attack scenario, you may require more fighters. This is because the defender will normally field three fighters and the counter-attack force will add another three fighters and three light bombers. I would select a range of different fighter types just for a bit of variety. Observation aircraft are also more common at this scale. Your orc aircraft range could include some two-engine bombers as well. The French fielded three types of artillery. The 75mm gun, the 105mm howitzer or gun, and the 155mm howitzer or gun. The larger pieces of artillery would typically be off the playing area, and it would be very rare for the 155 to be deployed. In summary, you can use the same artillery for your, that you use for the squad scale in this particular scale as well. At platoon scale, deploying anti-aircraft artillery may be more common, and you'll probably be deploying more 25mm anti-tank guns. However, you generally can use the same force mix that you had created for your squad scale. Just add a little bit more 25mm anti-tank and maybe another 37mm anti-aircraft gun or equivalent figure. Engineers are more common at this scale, and players should consider purchasing some figures to represent engineers. It's also more common to use transporting trucks at this scale, especially if you intend to have a game with lots of movement. At this scale, you typically field a lot more different tank types and a lot more tanks. You will need three or four types of tanks, 14 AMR 35s, 7 Sombawa S 35s and 7 H 39s or H 35s. GHQ offers all these vehicles for five vehicles for 11.95 US each. The attacker would normally deploy two motorised battalions with an 81mm mortar element at regimental level. The infantry are transported by motorcycles and trucks. This shows just one battalion, so double this to get your full force mix. At the defensive infantry area, we normally deploy less infantry, although it's generally similar to our squad scale force mix. As a result, our squad scale force mix is more than adequate, although some minor adjustment may be required. If we select all the options and transports, we have a force mix of 190 element, which, apart from the aircraft, can be taken almost exclusively from the squad force mix. There's very few additional elements you need to purchase if you're moving to a platoon from a squad scale set of rules. When using a company scale set of rules, a player will need to deploy a division or equivalent, although rarely a full strength division. A player will need a defensive infantry division and an offensive panzer or mechanized division. In all cases, a player will need a divisional headquarters and from two to three regimental headquarters. You can use the same headquarter elements you had selected for your squad scale game, except it's very rare to have a third regiment in a single division. We can use the same aircraft force mix as the platoon scale rules, except I would certainly consider more two-engine bombers. What you can see here is the MB200, which are two-engine bombers. The French did actually have single-engine ground attack aircraft, um, which I'm not showing here, but you can actually purchase the MB200, which is why I've got it displayed in this slide. We can continue to use the field artillery from our squad or platoon force mixes, although it's still rare to field the 155mm howitzer, or 155mm gun at least. The guns were typically used for counter-battery. Uh, if you're going to do counter-battery, you probably would want to deploy them, but otherwise you're probably better off staying with the 105s. For the anti-tank and anti-aircraft force mix, we continue to use the same force mix we use for our platoon and squad scale although it would be uh, rare to use all these figures in a typical game, but it does give you the full range of options you may uh, particularly need. At company scale, engineers are always used, although it would be rare to have more than three elements. The reason why engineers tend to be used more at company scale is because at company scale, your game turn length is much longer, so the opportunity to build fortifications, to cross rivers, etc., uh, tend to be significantly more common at this scale. At squad scale, it's rare for you to spend the time to build a fortified position because, quite frankly, the game would be over several times in, in a row before you'd actually complete that. Not at company scale. As for our tanks, we can use the same platoon scale force mix. No additional vehicles are required. For our motorised infantry, once again, we can still use our platoon-scale force mix. 
For our defending forces, the force mix used for company scale is similar to platoon scale. At this scale, a lot of rounding occurs, which gives each player a reasonable amount of flexibility in terms of the kind of elements they wish to deploy. If you're using a set of rules using strength points, you will need more elements than shown here, but using LWRS we end up with two regiments of two battalion sized elements. To be safe, you could expand this to three regiments of two battalions or two regiments of three battalions. In conclusion, the elements required may vary a great deal depending on the actual specific company scale set of rules selected, but in this example we can build out our force mix easily using the elements from our platoon scale force mix, around about 130 elements in total. If you are uncertain what scale of rules you wish to use, then this chart can allow you to determine what to purchase which will cover all scale sets of rules from squad to company. If players are aware of the rules they wish to use, then they can look at the army list within those rules to get a more accurate force mix. But this gives you enough flexibility to try a wide range of different rules. This concludes my video of building up a French 1939 force mix for squad, platoon or company scale rules. Denken Sie daran immer für Hill, Heimatland zu kämpfen.